and you said so many different things that I, you know, we don't obviously don't have time to dig into all. I guess fl flow triggers, right? I mean, because I you, you you touched on that, and I had a note here saying is everybody. So those are the preconditions by which that allow flow you to enter the conditions to to create flow, right? So is can anyone get into that state? Is there are there some people just better, or can they get to that state easier, or? Mm. You know, is it a so, biological component? Yeah, you're, you're talking about what scientists call flow proneness. Mm. And pe certain people are more flow prone than others. Um, and there are certain behavioral things, non-flow triggers. For example, we did a bunch of work with Dr. Glenn Fox, who's a neuroscientist at USC who specializes in gratitude. And we discovered that people who have regular gratitude practices mm because gratitude calms down the nervous system so much. Yeah. It's easier to get into that challenge skills balance. So people with regular gratitude practice is, are more flow prone. That's one example. There's a bunch of different neurobiological examples. And the other thing that nobody talks about is your flow proneness also correlates with what triggers you get might get into. So let me give you a, a sports example. There are endurance athletes who ride like runners high into flow. They're riding the anandamide and the endorphins that underpin flow, the pain relief. And that pain relief tends to show up after like a six hours of exercise, five hours of mm. exercise, right? You get these long time endurance athletes. Whereas I tend to be, I tend to ride the dopamine drivers and flow. So novelty, creativity, unpredictability, risk. And those are very quick, right? And they can happen very, very quickly for people. But for people who are really wired for endurance sports, you'll also, so there's a, in the s and community, there's an s and based uh, flow state known as flying. And it's a pain-induced flow state. It's the exact same flow state as endurance athletes are seeking. It's the same neurobiology on the, on the, on the front end. And that seems to take a little longer for people usually or require kind of a more intense experience i think is what we learned from the s m community a little bit in my book stealing fire we talk about the overlap with with, with certain sexual practices in altered states because hmm. there's a lot of overlap in in the brain between what happens in a flow state what happens in traumatic stress what happens in a psychedelic experience yeah, what yeah. happens like all these altered states of consciousness share a lot of commonalities and so one of the ways we study these things is through comparative altered states basically. interesting yeah because the brain doesn't really know the context right i think that by the chemical it, i would imagine the chemical release is, is sort of similar in different ratios based on the different context whether it's sex whether it's other things you're talking about so it's almost like it could yeah and, boil and, it down to and and, and and so like one of the things that happens in flow is the prefrontal cortex deactivates this happens in almost all altered mm. states and this is the part of the brain that does since itself to time, why does time pass strangely in altered states? Because time's a calculation yeah. formed all over the prefrontal cortex. The network goes down, you can't, you lose track of time, you lose your sense of self, that's all these things. And that's common in a lot of altered states. So when you say people are more empathetic, they can see things from more sides. It's this part of the brain that gets really active. It's active and flow, it's why flow expands empathy. Out of body experiences are among many other things that are extreme, you're in a life-threatening situation and your brain goes, oh shit, let's change the perspective yeah. radically in a second to see if we can save your life. Right. Um, first time I had an out-of-body experience and they're really common, they show up in like 20% of the population, hmm. um, have them, but uh, I went skydiving. I jumped out of the plane and jumped right out of my body and I was watching my body fall. Come and I was on. like, How, what? I was 18, <laughs> I didn't know about any of this stuff. Who's that guy? I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I thought I was dying, right? Wow. Like, and that was part of like where some of these questions first arose for me, because I was 17 years old when I had that experience and what the hell caused that, right? I wasn't very religiously inclined. I wasn't very, I was like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Um, and why was that? And you know, now we know exactly and we can reproduce it in the lab and things like that. It's neat.